So thanks for joining this morning. Um, I am uh, Simran Boozer, and I am going to be talking today about um, the Aperion solution. Um, we are a provider of mobile application management, and what that means is essentially we have a platform which is useful for any development uh, environment where you have a way to build your apps already, which you do with Alpha Software, but you need a way to distribute those apps, to manage those apps, and to secure those apps. Now, we primarily are focused on companies that are building lots of apps for their internal users. In other words, the enterprise user. Uh, these are oftentimes called business to employee apps or in-house apps. But the solution can also be used for app testing within an organization prior to going out to the app, Apple uh, iTunes Store or Google Play. I'm not going to go into great detail on the platform, but I wanted to just make you aware that we are very um, comprehensive in terms of what we can do. Uh, we have a complete lifecycle management solution, which I'll focus on, and specifically with respect to how it works with Alpha Software. But we also have a lot of other features that are useful for large enterprises, for example, identity federation through SAML 2.0, and our platform itself is accessible through APIs. The way in which you would normally access the solution, and you will probably see this also in the demo uh, later in terms of the two solutions together, is through our administrative console. So when an application is published into the console, uh, from Alpha Software, or if you are importing applications or adding apps from any other source, you can see all of your apps in one place. Uh, the solution has the ability to do tiered administration in several ways. Uh, you can do it by a group, so you can say that only certain users would be able to see and install applications in that group. You can also delegate those roles to others. And one of the nice things about the solution is that in order to administer it, you do not have to be a technical person or a developer. You can be a line of business, a project manager, an administrator who is really trying to get apps out. So you as an app builder uh, may not be the one that's actually involved with getting the app out to all the folks in an organization, but that person can actually work with you as part of the team and use our solution to do that. So in terms of how we work with Alpha Anywhere, the basic idea is that the apps that you develop with Alpha Anywhere can be directly published into Ease, which is the name of our product, the Aperion solution, onboarded, if you will. <clears throat> and that work is done directly within Alpha Anywhere, and anyone that has an Aperion account can do that. We then can offer additional capabilities for the app that you've built to inspect that application, and we'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Protect it with security features and also to provide other dynamic policies that let you do some other pretty cool stuff, which we'll show as well, like remote control, which is a great feature. Sign your apps, and those of you that are involved with the iOS environment understand very well that signing applications on the Apple environment can sometimes be very challenging. Um, and, and a specific example would be you might build an app with a developer credential while you're testing and so forth, but then the enterprise that you're delivering to may need to re-sign that application in order to get it deployed to all their employees. What we can do is make that very, very straightforward and do that right on our platform so that administrator doesn't have to have a Macintosh, uh, doesn't have to have you know, the whole Xcode environment, which is great. And then finally, we actually provide some direct support for things like commenting and rating and actually even reporting problems. So that can be helpful during testing. In terms of the features of the product, I'm not going to go into every feature, but I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I think are of interest to developers. Specifically, we have what's called app inspection. Now, this may not be necessary with the Alpha apps because Alpha itself is a very obviously secure app, and of course, you would never have malware and so forth in it. But if you were, for example, putting other apps into the system that were built with other solutions or natively, or maybe you've obtained an app from somebody you don't even know if you're in an organization, we provide a unified way to inspect all apps. And this is sometimes an important compliance process. So. They may even want to inspect an alpha app, especially if they're trying to make sure that they are maintaining a standard with respect to what those apps have. We also have an application workflow. And what that means is that you can have groups within the organization, for example, that will be responsible for signing off on the app for QA. 
or signing off on the app for security review. And all of these steps are auditable and recorded. Now, this is an option. You don't need to do this. So if you're a developer that just says, hey, I just want to publish my app and go, you can do that. But if you choose to, you can use the workflow to actually create multiple steps before an application is deployed out to all the or people within an organization. The other thing that our product provides is the ability to do what's called app wrapping. And app wrapping is really the, the way in which we do policies. So, of course, you can incorporate features of alpha software and other libraries to do things within an application. But what we have found is there's many things that may be beyond what you may want to do in your application. For example, enterprise single sign-on or the ability to have remote control for support purposes. All of these features can be added after your app is created, after your app is basically baked and done, and then added on the fly with our solution. You can add these features and you can take them back and you can do that as many times as you want and the source code is never changed, your executable is left alone, uh, you don't have to actually open the app up within the environment and start recoding. So we think this is one of the things that really is extremely helpful, especially when you get into corporate environments uh, where they may have apps from multiple sources but want the standard policies across all. As I said, we also have what's called app signing, and this is, of course, the ability to take an application and sign or re-sign that app without having to have a developer involved. And this will definitely reduce time and complexity, especially if you have multiple people that are involved in the process of getting an app out, and you can have non-technical people do this as well. So, in summary, we have a complete solution for deploying enterprise apps from the onboarding, inspection, policy, management, uh, the credentialing or signing, and the deployment. And we do that in a way that's very easy for a uh, developer or others to use. And one of the things that I would want to do now is actually show you in probably about the next 10 minutes an end-to-end -end sort of demonstration of how we would do this with an actual alpha software app. Now, I believe that Bob will be showing you much more on the platform side, on the alpha side. So we're kind of at the tail end of the process here, if you'll forgive me. But this is actually, I think, helpful because you'll understand kind of the role in which Aperion uh, plugs in. So let me for a moment switch over to the browser. Um, and uh, I just wanted to check in here. Is everything going well with the webinar so far? I, I just want to make sure that our uh, administrator is uh, is all set. Any it, you guys can hear okay? It seems like you can see the screen. Just check it in. Loud and clear, and the screen is coming through fine, so it's all set. All right. Thanks, Dave. So this is actually the administrative console that you're seeing. We've logged into the console, and as you can see, there's a number of apps here. I've actually already incorporated an iTunes app uh, called iTunes Scan, which is an app that's built with Alpha. But I'm going to actually do this again just so you can see what the process looks like. Um, it's a little bit like a cooking show. I've, I've baked a couple of things in the oven beforehand, but I will show you what the process is anyway. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do what's called Add Application. And this is typically the first thing you would do as an administrator. Um, you would go in and you have a number of different kinds of apps you can add, iOS, uh, Android, and so forth. Now, if you were using Alpha software, this particular step would not be something you would do. You would actually be doing this from the Alpha software solution via their integration. But I wanted to show this to you anyway so you can see kind of what the complete process would be. And it would be very similar, except you'd already, of course, have your app built and it would be available. So in this case, I'm going to actually take an app that I have built with uh, Alpha software already. I'm going to essentially import it into the system. And one of the things that happens at this point is that our system will detect a number of things with this app, not just the fact that it's a valid file, but also, for example, it'll tell you that it only has a distribution uh, profile for development. What that means is you could never actually run this app uh, in any other device. However, we're going to allow you to continue because you can re-sign it. And I would say that this is one of the most important aspects of our product in that you can take apps that are either have a uh, development profile, an ad hoc profile, and again, this is specific to iOS, or even an expired profile, and it will work with our system because you can re-sign. At this point, I put in a version information. I can say, you know, first version, put my name in as the author. Uh, there's a number of other features you can, you can select. 
uh, about whether or not you want that app to be directly downloadable or mandatory. These are all you know more advanced features, and I encourage you to look at the system. We pull in the icon, uh, and really all we need to do is have a short description and a long description, which are those you know items which will show up both in the app store uh, that the user sees as well as the um, uh, the administrative display. So I say OK, and that's the adding of the app, and that would be very similar to the process of pushing an app into the system via alpha. Now you'll notice that this app is disabled, and the reason that it's disabled is that it has not been improved yet, it has not been signed, and so if I want to go ahead and just push that app out, what I could do is actually go in and go ahead and sign that application with a wildcard, let's say, and I could actually immediately make it enabled and also notify folks if I want to. But what I've done is take this existing profile and basically re-sign this application. And then, as I said, any of you that have been involved with iOS know that this itself is a very, very handy thing to be able to do. You also can sign on the fly with existing credentials uh, or actually do it manually. But of course, once you've uploaded a credential and want to maintain them, this is the way to go. So I'll go ahead and start the signing process. Now, while that's happening, I want to now go over to what the user experience is. If I have already gone ahead and done this and that app is now available in the app catalog, what I will see is a uh, uh, essentially I'm going to switch over to my uh, um, uh, to my iPad and you're going to see a copy of my iPad. And here's actually what an app catalog looks like. So a user is going to come in here and say, you know, I want to get access to this app so I can try it for testing or for using this app along with other apps. They would come in and they would have a branded experience. So basically all of your users would see a brand from your company and that's the way that this works because this is actually a uh, an enterprise app itself which is signed by that organization and, and for the employees. I would press this icon to open up the app. I will be asked to authenticate. In this case we're using single sign-on uh, which is a protocol called SAML 2.0 and what that allows us to do is actually uh, use the identity provider of that organization which could be their active directory, it could be their federated system, and again, most large organizations have a mechanism for authentication of their users, so we're not replicating that. Now, you can with Appirian, by the way, of course, add users manually, either by adding them one at a time or uploading uh, spreadsheets or CSV files so you can actually provision people. So there's multiple ways to provision. But everybody that accesses the system will have to authenticate. Now, I've added this app, and you'll notice that it shows up in the app catalog, and here it is, and I could actually you know, click on that app. This is one I had previously put in, and you'll notice it's got some reviews already. I could have media and other things, and I can actually go ahead and open that app. Uh, so what I've done is basically push this app in. Now, I'm going to go back over to the uh, dashboard here, and you'll see the uh, iTunes app is already, uh, iTunes scan is already installed. So if I wanted to install, by the way, uh, the way the process works is I simply go in and I would press uh, to, to install it now because it's been installed it will actually automatically go and run the app which is kind of a cool feature. So you can both install the app as well as run it from the app catalog assuming you've used um, the policies for that. So I want to go back to this because this is actually sort of the, the process that an administrator goes through. You'll notice that um, I do have this ability to add what are called policies. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, go through the process of saying, you know, I've got this app in, but I want to assign policies. And these policies can include things like tracking the usage of an app. And again, this is all done after an app has been built by the, uh, by the developer. I can collect crash reports, which is a very nice feature with respect to um, developments. You can actually get crash reports. And there's other ways to do this, obviously, but we provide a mechanism as well. You can also authenticate the user if you want, so you could use authentication in addition to whatever the application itself does if you choose to do that. You can do remote control, and this is a capability to actually take over the app while it's running the iOS remote control that we have in our product, uh, something that's quite unique uh, in that normally, for example, when I'm showing my screen here in Reflector, I can only view the iPad or the iPhone, but in remote control, you can take over a device that's anywhere in the world on any kind of connectivity and actually press the buttons, and I'll show how we can do that. We can also do what's called self-updating, um, and as a developer, this is actually one of the most interesting features in that, you know, you can actually push an app out, 
and the app store that the user has, the enterprise app store, will show a badge and it will show an update. But as you know, and if you've ever used a public app store, you know, a lot of people don't update their apps. Well, let's say you're, you're developing your app and you really want to force an update of your app. You can do that through this mechanism. And it's one of the nice things about our system is that you can actually set a date and time and say, this user must update this app and the app itself will check and it will do a self-update forcing function when that user runs the app. We also have data wipe, which is a security feature, which allows you to actually wipe the, uh, the data store of the app. Again, if somebody leaves an organization or you want to make sure that that app is not usable anymore, you can do that. And then finally, we have a runtime integrity check, another security feature. Now, there's a number of other security features, including built-in virtual private networks and encrypted data at rest. I'm not going to go through every feature, but I at least wanted to show you some of the things that are possible with the solution. And give you a sense of what you can do with Aperion in conjunction with the Alpha software solution. So one of the things that I've done here is I've done a, a remote control. And so if I apply that, what it does is basically enable that app to be, to be taken over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and, and look at the set of users. And you'll know that from my, uh, from my iPad, I have run the Alpha Anywhere app. And this app has already had, by the way, the policy of remote control applied. It's been re-signed. It's been distributed. I did that prior to the webinar. So it's kind of like the, uh, the baked cake, if you will, already in the oven. And we've already finished baking this cake. But what I'm going to do now, which I think you'll appreciate, is I'm going to say, you know, this user doesn't understand this app. They have some help questions. Or maybe they've seen something in the application which, you know, isn't quite right and they have a hard time describing it over the phone to you and you want to be able to see what they're doing. So what you can actually do is you can click on a user that has been, uh, you know, reported to you this issue. You can drill down to that user and say, oh, you're on your iPad right now, great. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a remote control. So what I'm actually going to do is click on remote control. I'm going to type in the remote control password. This is a master password to make sure the people that are using remote control have authority. And what will happen is the user is going to actually see a remote control session request. Now, I flipped over again using what's called reflection. And again, reflection is only a view of my screen. I can't actually press accept here. You know, my cursor is here, but it doesn't really work. I've got to go over with my touchpad and actually say accept. Now, once I've done that, this iPad that I'm running, and I'm going to go here and close reflector for a minute, this iPad actually with this app running can be completely controlled from my browser. So this is my, my uh, Firefox browser. I've just done remote control. And I can actually hit beep, for example. I'm not sure that much is going to happen there. Uh, there's a beep. I can do a native alert. And again, all of these keystrokes actually get transformed into um, you know, real functionality on the, uh, on the device. So it's pretty cool. And the whole point of this is that you can both see what a user is doing and you can actually control that functionality as well. And again, this is just one of the policies that we provide. And by the way, I'll, I'll say I'm done now. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. And the whole point of our solution is to provide a workflow that not only enables you to um, have applications that you've built with um, uh, the alpha solution, but there are a number of other kinds of apps that you can that you can create on the fly. For example, you can actually create apps um, that are really web URLs and make them into native apps. We have a process called a hybrid app. We also, of course, support the public app stores. So in many cases, folks within an organization may want to have a pointer to a website, or they may want to actually put an iTunes app into the solution uh, so their users can be, you know, basically guided to recommended applications or Google Play. So I've only really showed you the native app capabilities, but there are many other capabilities available within the solution. And we certainly encourage you to uh, explore. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing is following up after this webinar with a mailing. And we're going to allow any, uh, uh, essentially any of the alpha customers or prospects that are using alpha anywhere to get a free uh, usage of Aperion for your uh, your single uh, Alpha Anywhere app at no charge. We have a special program we've set up with Alpha, and we definitely would encourage folks who are involved with apps that they want either tested or distributed within uh, corporate environments to uh, to check us out. 
that's so that's terrific. all I got for now. I'm just going to uh, uh, go back to the last slide here, uh, which is really just the the final slide saying that um, we've got um, you know a number of reasons why customers choose Aperion, but I would say one of the biggest things that we provide besides you know device independence and you know the dynamic policies and life cycle is really ease of use. Um, a lot is said about ease of use, and I know Alpha really prides themselves on making a very attractive and easy to use solution, and philosophically we're very aligned with Alpha, and we believe it has to be easy for developers, easy for administrators, as well as users for the system to be successful. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Simran. The remote control feature looked especially interesting. I imagine that helps a great deal when you're doing technical support. Absolutely. And uh, I think one of the things that is so funny is I've had so many, I've sat next to so many people who are trying to describe what they see on their iPhone or iPad to somebody over the phone. And they're, yeah, there's this green blotch in the upper left. I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? <laughs> exactly. We should be able to do better than that, right? So it absolutely is a great tech support feature. That's fabulous. Our next presenter is Bob Moore. Uh, Bob, I've noticed that you're on mute, so please take yourself off of mute. Ah, oh, there you are. Hey, Bob. Okay, done. All right, hey. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to, to fly. So um, I have multiple screens, and let's see if I can... Let's see, so can you now see... Um, Yep, I'm looking at the alpha, alpha. Alpha anywhere. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So uh, what I'm going to do is just bring you through the uh, integration of Aperion, show you how we implemented that. Um, I'm going to start out with a World Cup application. This is a sample app that's in the uh, PhoneGap uh, directory, and uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I built this app to uh, show how to use uh, RESTful. Uh, API calls, um, and here we talk to uh, multiple uh, backends uh, to get information about the uh, 2014 World Cup. So um, actually I could show you this on my Android device, so that we'll show you the actual app running so you can just see it if you haven't ever seen it. So this is on my Nexus 7 here, and so what we do is we make an API call and get all of the teams that were uh, competing and uh, then we can tap on a row and then we we pull up a list of of uh, the scores uh, for the different matches that before they went into the finals then we can say oh I'd like to see the players and then you can tap on a player and bring up player statistics and we are also tying into Flickr so you can see Flickr photos that it might pull up of that player and um, Let's go back here, and we've implemented, uh, there's an about screen here, and it'll go out to the uh, alpha site. This is the PhoneGap um, browser, uh, in-app browser that we just brought up there, so we didn't blow out of the app when that went. And um, what else do we have in here? Oh, we I also tied in uh, Google Maps so that you can tap on a uh, a button and see where the country is in case you don't know. So there's a lot going on here and uh, it's, a, it's a great app to study if you uh, if you are so inclined. So um, that's the application and uh, so if I wanted to push this app up to uh, Perian, how would I do it? So we'll just uh, close out that component and we're going to bring up the PhoneGap builder right here. So this is how we actually build a PhoneGap project and in this case this is an existing project uh, so I've entered in my credentials and so on, and then I've said, oh, I want to build an Android and iOS version of this, and my initial UX component is the component that we just looked at, the WC underbar UX. And um, down in here, uh, I've assigned my app ID and, and all this different information about the app and uh, what plugins I need and so on. But this is the key to uh, tying this into Aperion is just if you click on Enable Aperion Ease Integration Options, um, then all of a sudden some more information will show up. And what you need to do is you need to uh, identify your login and your password. And you need to also pick uh, the Aperion Ease server URL. They have a different URL that will be used for Europe. Uh, so we'll just leave that the way it is. 
Um, and that's about all you need to do. Uh, from here, typically what you would do is you would save and upload the application to PhoneGap Build. We're going to go ahead and do that. In this case, it's found an existing app up on PhoneGap, so it's going to uh, just create a new one. So uh, just wait while that updates. It shouldn't take too long. And then that's all set. So now it's going to retrieve all of the apps that I have up on PhoneGap Build, and it's going to present me with uh, uh, all the different apps that I've got up there. And you can see that now it's building uh, Android and iOS builds for the World Cup 2014 app. So that'll just take a little bit. Sometimes it's a little quicker than others. It just depends on the time of day. It also depends on whether or not you're doing a presentation, I think. So yeah, sometimes. That's how that works, yeah. So we should see these transition to complete. Now, once they do transition to complete, you can click on this button right here. And it's going to ask you, because I've enabled the uh, pairing integration, would you like the, to download the IPA file so that you can upload it to, uh, to a pairing? So in this case, we'll say yes. And then it's going to present a QR code for you. You can scan this in. Uh, you can now run it and test it on your device and so on, make sure everything looks good. Um, once you go ahead and do that, you can then click on this button down here to launch the Apparent App Manager. So uh, once you do that, it's now going to log into uh, the Apparent Ease uh, database, and it's going to show us the apps that are that are currently there. So here we can see we've already published uh, the World Cup app. We've published the Android version of that. But let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and and uh, add uh, the iOS version. So here we'll call that uh, World Cup 2014 author World Cup stats photos and uh, maps. Stay up to date with the 2014 World Cup. Even though it's passed, people are still probably interested in that, right? So there we go. Uh, we'll say 1.0. Uh, I might want to put something like published 11-13-2014. Uh, and now we're going to pick the uh, the file that we'd like to upload, and um, I don't. I've already uploaded the APK, so I'm going to upload the IPA file. Let's pick that. Go ahead. That all looks good. And now it created the app up on Aperian Ease, and now it's uploading the IPA file to Aperian. Once again, takes just a bit. So once that completes, um, it should update our list of applications, and uh, and then we can go into a parent and see what's going on there. So there we go. Now we can see um, that information there. Now let's say I, I, I if I wanted to at any time, I can also make some changes here to uh, to some of this information. So um, let's say I want to update this app here. So it's going to request the app details and bring it on up um, and just um, we'll just put something in there. And notice now here I'm not going to upload a file. I could upload a new file here if I wanted to, but I just wanted to make some change to this metadata. So if I do that, uh, it'll change it. It'll highlight it to indicate that we've got a change and, uh, and you're all set. So that is essentially our integration here with Aperion. So if we were to come out now and and take a look at our our uh, our database here, uh, we should see, yeah. So here we can see the 
uh, the two uh, World Cup apps, one for the Android and one for iOS. And of course from here, you know, I can come in and edit details on this and this would be very similar to uh, the, the types of things that uh, Cimarron just showed you. So from here we could uh, easily manage it from there. So as a developer you can just push your app right up to the Aperion um, uh, Ease uh, store and, and then just, you know, and go from there. So that's pretty much what we've got here. Uh, hey, uh, Bob, I just had a comment about this. This is, uh, if you go back to your, your administration uh, console in the uh, alpha side, um, I just wanted to comment you guys did a really nice job of making this uh, really easy to follow. Um, the other thing is that when you do that call that you're doing to find out all the apps, you'll see not only alpha apps, but any other apps you might have on the system. Uh, so it's actually a nice way to inventory. Um, the other thing that uh, I wanted to point out is that uh, you can um, obviously uh, assign policies and assign those apps and do all those things once you've got them into the system. And the other uh, thing is that there's a history of all the versions. So when you push that new version, for example, you'll actually see that if you go back to the administrator in uh, Aperion and you click on uh, just the app itself, It'll show you um, at the highest level. It'll show you, you know, when you've actually updated, and you know, all the sort of history, if you will, of that app. So it's it's got some things that are also, if you scroll down to version history. Right. Yeah. History, yeah. Very good. And it actually tells you, you know, what the notes are and who's done what, and um, actually who the author is. So you could theoretically have even another. Uh, I'm not sure it's a great idea, but you could have another person you know, working on the app and publish into that same app if they had credentials, right? If they had the authority to do that. So it's actually kind of interesting because it does provide a mechanism for a repository of uh, sort of the history of the app as well as the app itself. Very good. Excellent. Well, we do have, uh, we do have time for questions if people want to type their questions in. And we do have a couple of questions. Um, so, Bob, are, are you ready for questions now or do you have a few more things to show? Uh, no, I'm all set here. Yep. Excellent. Um, the first one comes from Larry, who asks, does Aperion keep track of app usage, and does it monitor adoption rate, and does it let you know if there's any problem with performance? I guess sort of three questions in one there. And also, are, okay. cr are crashes uh, reported if there is a crash? Right. So the answer to that is, uh, let me take it one at a time here. Um, in the administrative console, and if you want to switch over, I can uh, I can switch over to our console here for a Great. second. Great. Let me go ahead and make it um, the center. Yeah. The, uh, one of the policies that we have is actually uh, called usage policies. So we do actually keep track of usage. Now, obviously, one of the challenges in the iOS environment is that somebody can run an app, and unless you've specifically instrumented that app yourself to keep track of usage, which there are ways to do that, obviously, um, you're not going to know. But what we do is actually allow this to be a policy that you can just check on. And um, you'll notice in this view, we have actually caught track of when the iTunes scan app has been used. So every time I've used that, it will actually take me over to that and it will show me that, you know, yes, indeed, it's been used. And there's actually some. Uh, additional information about uh, you know who used it and when that you can get from both a download uh, and a report. Now, so the answer to that question is absolutely yes. One of the challenges, though, is that we don't do anything more than that on the usage side. In other words, if you wanted to know like how long somebody used the app or very specific performance type of stuff, um, you're not necessarily going to see that. So here you can see a usage count four and you can see a download count two and you can get more detailed information in the reporting. But for those kinds of things you would need, you know, some kind of a performance management product or, you know, something like that and, you know, New Relic and there's a number of solutions that do very detailed like performance analysis. We do not do that, okay? Um, the other question was crash reports and yes, you will get a crash report. Luckily this has not crashed yet, but you will get crash reports in the system when this policy has been applied and if the app does crash. So the answer to that is yes. Excellent. Um, another question, and there are a few more coming in. Um, do the policies affect the performance of the app? In other words, if it's uh, like the more policies you add, does it slow it down at all or not really? Yeah, so the policies uh, really don't affect performance. Um, 
The way that this works is that the app is wrapped with policies. There's an initial, sometimes, depending on the policy, there may be an initial request to the server. For example, if you're doing something like authentication, um, we will make sure that the uh, app is still allowed to run. And of course, things like usage do you know communicate with the server. But the actual you know UI and all the functionality of that app is really not impacted at all by this because most of it is done when the app is in foreground foregrounded or started up. So that will check things like it'll register usage and will say, hey, do I have a new version? Uh, it will say, uh, did I crash last time? Because the way crash reports work is that you actually have to run the app one more time because when it crashes, it obviously is done. But the next time it will go, oh, there was a crash, let me report it up. Um, do I need to wipe the data? Is this app still valid? So all of that is typically done at the very beginning of the app. Now, once an app is running, if you do enable remote control, there will be obviously some slowing of the UI. You know, but it's pretty negligible. But if you did have a very slow connection, you might see some delay. So really, the only policy that applies, that we apply, that could potentially impact performance that a user might see would be remote control. But in that situation, they're pretty well aware of what's going on too. So it's not like uh, something magical is happening and their app is slowing down. They would know it's under remote control. Okay, great. That makes sense. Thank you. Uh, looks like we have one last question, and that is has to do with pricing. Uh, you did mention that we will be sending out a mailing uh, offering a free type of a Parian account, but in general, what does it cost to use a Parian uh, when you when you start bringing it into an organization? Right. So in in our environments, we will price by the user, and typically there is a per user per month fee, and a user is defined as a person who logs in, so they could potentially have one, two, three, four devices, but they still accounting as one user. And typically, we are selling, you know, in like hundred user kind of increments. Uh, if somebody has specific questions about pricing, they obviously can contact me, and we can give them more information. But the pricing is you know, on the order of, you know, several types of dollars per mo user per month, depending on volume. So that's the way we price things. That's great. Thank you. Hey, um, uh, Dave, I'd like to uh, just add one more thing here that I'm not sure Simran touched on, uh, and I think it's really, really important. And it's the ability to target applications to certain groups. So, for example, if I were to build an application that was pertinent to my Eastern sales team, I could push this app out just to my eastern sales team and then I might have another one that's for my western sales team so I think that's also a really uh, cool feature that Aperian's got here. Oh that's great. Yeah so thanks for pointing that out. Um, it, it is actually a multi-functional system so when you when you use groups actually you have users within groups and you have uh, apps within groups and so basically what happens is that you have members of a group and you have apps that are in that. It's really the intersection of that that defines which users get which apps. Excellent. So Thomas has a question. He says, when you do a, a data wipe, does that require the user to accept it, or does it happen in the background? Yeah, so a data wipe is a security feature, and a user is not in control of that. Um, and typically, that policy is used when, for example, somebody may lose their device or they may not be part of an organization anymore. And one of the things about our product that's very unique is that unlike uh, solutions which are typically IT infrastructure solutions and they're typically called mobile device management solutions, MDM, they have the ability to do a wipe, but it's basically a device wipe. <laughs> so one of the challenges is in this new world of bring your own device, not everybody is thrilled about the IT department going out and wiping their device if they're worried about some you know, enterprise data getting loose. Right. So what we do is we do it at the app level. So let's say you have an application that has pricing data or some kind of, you know, confidential information. You could make that app available to people. You could require an authentication. And then furthermore, you could do a data wipe. And it's really sort of an extra, I would say, security feature because typically if you de-authenticate it, they would never be able to log in. But a possible hacker could get into that device and forensically try to get to the data. So it's really built for that scenario where you can actually go in and, you know, basically zero out the data and make it unreadable after that. Excellent. Uh, well, that looks like it wraps it up for questions, unless you guys have anything else to add. So thank you very much uh, for attending our webinar today. Thank you very much, Simran. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, we appreciate 
uh, your efforts here. If you have any questions about what you saw, please send an email to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. A recording of this webinar will be posted next week on our events page, which is www.alphasoftware.com events.